Okay, well I'm back inside my customer's 2000 Volvo V70 and she was complaining that the shifter was kind of finicky. Sometimes it won't shift in the gear, the button. Right now the button feels okay. <clears throat> but she was saying that the button occasionally gets jammed up to where she can't put it in the gear or um, the gear shift moves with the slightest bump. It doesn't lock in the gear. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check that out. I believe the button is broken. So we'll go ahead and perform a repair here. So the first thing we want to do is set the parking brake. That way the vehicle doesn't roll back. Um, if you're unsure if the parking brake is working or not, you're going to want to go ahead and chalk the wheels. And uh, the next thing we want to do is turn the ignition to the on position, put our foot on the the service brake pedal so that way we can get the gear shift out of park so I'm gonna go ahead and put it all the way down to low range and from here just get a good grip <clears throat> a good grip on the shifter and pull straight up and that's what dislodges the uh, shifter there's a little there's a little button here on the shifter itself that actuates the gear lever you can go ahead and put it back in park so we can shut the ignition switch off. And just as I suspected, the button is broken. But there's an easy way to fix this, and I'll show you how. Okay, so we've got the shift knob out of the vehicle, and now it's on a suitable work surface. Uh, in this case, it's my dining room table. But anyway, hopefully I got, I've got the lighting here good enough so that you can see what's going on. Anyway, um, what we want to do here is pull the old broken knob off of the shift uh, handle. And to do that, you're going to want a screwdriver that can work up into the, uh, into the shift knob here so that we push the button out like so. Okay, once it's out so far... You can go ahead and grab the button and pull it out just a tad further. Okay, so this is more or less what we're working with. I'll pull it out. Okay, uh, one thing you want to do is keep track of how this spring is oriented. Um, right here is one leg of the spring up against the shifter button. And the other is up against the shifter housing, or the shift knob itself. Um, so from here, pretty easy to do, especially if you've got a broken knob at the bottom, or button at the bottom. We we'll go ahead and just pull straight up, and it comes right out. Now here, I'll get a close-up of <clears throat> the spring. So as you might be able to tell, or hopefully, you can see the... You can see where the other leg is hooked into the shifter body, like there. Okay, so you want to keep track of that. You want to know how that, that spring is oriented here. Um, what I like to do from here is to push this pin in just a little bit, and that helps facilitate the removal of the old spring. I've seen these springs broken on a couple of occasions, so you may have an easier time removing it, but I like to get my Leatherman pliers that I always keep on me and pull the spring out. Okay, so from here we just want to make sure that the uh, bottom pin is in place and this this other pin that the, uh, the rest of the shifter button mechanism uh, uh, pivots on is still there and also the pin that's mounted to the button itself anyway um, you can get these aftermarket shifter button repair kits from a variety of places uh, this one here I bought from Swedish car parts um, as you can see here the button is black in color or really dark gray um, as opposed to the factory button which is very light gray and it comes with a new spring and, of course, the button itself. Um, anyway, the first thing I like to do once I've got the 
shifter uh, knob ready for the new button is to put the spring in place. I'm going to try to hook the uh, spring back in its original location. And again, it helps if you push this pin over just a little bit to give you a little bit more clearance on this left side of the knob here. Okay, so from here, I push this pin back over till it's flush with here. <clears throat> and then just go ahead and move the spring in a way that it's the, uh, the leg of it is back in its original uh, location like so. Now this is where my trick comes in. I like to use a screwdriver flathead like this, preferably one that has little serrations in it like this Craftsman. Um, and I'll pry this other leg up uh, and do something like this. So the screwdriver is holding the leg of the spring up and this mechanism inside the shifter is ready to accept the new shift button. Okay, so we pull the spring off of the old broken button and transfer it over to the new button. Fortunately, the spring, or sorry, the pin is a little bit tighter in the new button than it is on the old ones. And actually that, that helps us a lot. Um, we're gonna go ahead and and put it back onto the shift body here, the shifter body. And we wanna make sure that this spring, the end of the spring here is right in the same location that it was in on the old shifter button. And this is, this is why I like to do this. You, I've only got two hands and I generally don't have a helper. So, and, and this keeps everything out of the way. Um, so anyway, once we got the pin in the new button here, we'll go ahead and line it up right here like so. As you can see, the, the uh, leg of the, sh of the spring here is in its correct location. And at this point, I'm going to put my finger on the end of the spring here so that it doesn't fall off when I pull the screwdriver out. out. And then we're going to use the screwdriver again and just make sure the spring is seated properly. And then we'll go ahead and push the button slowly towards the, uh, the main shifter knob body. And then on the bottom here, we'll go ahead and clip the button onto its bottom pivot spring or pivot pin. You may have to use a screwdriver or something similar so that this will snap on properly. Um, take your time. This is just plastic. You don't want to break anything. Sometimes it, it takes a little bit of finagling to, uh, to get this lined up properly, but give it enough time and you'll get it on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just mess with this a little bit more. Of course, when I'm doing it on camera behind a tripod, things are a little harder for me, but okay. So once you get that lined up, the pin centered, you can go ahead and push and that button clicks into this bo it, its bottom pivot. And we'll check the spring again. It looks like the spring has moved just a little bit on its pin. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it like so until until it is seated in the correct place, which is just like so. And then from here, we'll go ahead and slowly push the button back in. It should not take a lot of pressure to do this. Um, if you're finding that it's jammed up, it's usually because this upper pin here is too far over to the left. So go ahead and push. And ta-da, the button is in. Uh, we want to check for correct operation, so we'll go ahead and push a, a screwdriver back in here, and you should feel, see, you should feel that spring working against the button. 
or your screwdriver. So see the buttons pushed out. And if I just, I'm holding it level. If you just let go of the screwdriver, it, it'll shoot out because of the spring. If it does that, then you know that you got everything in there correctly. The spring is oriented the way it should be. And from here, all we need to do is reinstall the shift knob onto the vehicle. Alrighty, so we're back at the vehicle with the repaired shift knob. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and put the knob on, or reinstall the knob into the, onto the vehicle. Um, the first thing we want to do to do that is pull up on the shift boot or gator, depending on <laughs> where you're from. Uh, typically in America, we call it the shift boot. Um, there is a retaining ring here that's more or less square shaped so that it, it allows the leather opening here to uh, to form to the same shape as the bottom of the shift knob. Pull that up, make sure the opening is more or less square, slowly push the shift knob down onto the shaft and then pull up on the boot and just like that, the leather boot attaches itself to the bottom of the shifter. From here, we can go ahead and seat the shifter the rest of the way onto the shaft. Um, usually a good uh, firm thump on the top of the shifter is all it takes. And like so, the knob is on properly, it's locked in, and we're pretty much done. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and do a functions check. So to do that, go ahead and step on the on the service brake, turn the key to the on position or position two, and make sure the shifter does not move out of the park position without the button being pushed in. Push the button in, it should go into reverse. Let go of the button, it will not go into park. It will go into neutral though, and also in the drive but it won't go anywhere else from there other than the neutral. That's done on purpose so that if you're backing out of a parking spot or something and you need to go in a, a forward gear right away, all you have to do is slap the shifter down and it goes into drive immediately. You don't have to mess with a button and that's just how it works. Um, very handy feature that most automatic floor shifted cars are uh, set up to do. Also, you don't need the button to go into neutral. They do that so that if the vehicle stalls out, like let's say you're driving, there's an issue with the vehicle, it stalls, you can immediately push it into neutral and run the starter. And then once the engine's back up and running, you can go ahead and put it back in the drive and be on your way. Anyway, from here, the shift knob should not move beyond drive unless you're pushing on the button. So we'll go ahead and repeat the test in the third gear. Or if you have a five-speed transmission, this position would be fourth. Um, and again, it will not go any further down unless the button's pushed. It will go all the way back up to neutral if you push it up though. So we'll go into second. Um, if you have a five speed, this will be third. <clears throat> and it should be able to go straight up all the way up to neutral, but not any further down than second. Again, in low range, well, there's nowhere else it can go beyond low range in the down position, but it should be able to go second, third, drive, and neutral. So everything's working. The button's got nice, good, firm spring pressure, and it's no longer getting stuck or feeling like it's jamming up. And again, just reverse. You need the button, push it in, and it go into park, and it should lock right in. Anyway, um, I hope this video was informative. Um, I tried really hard to get a good point of view so that you can see exactly uh, what I'm looking at when I'm putting the buttons in these knobs. Um, as you might have noticed, my procedure is a little bit different than what's published on the web. I find it easier to do it my way. Um, that way I don't have to mess with the spring. The, the screwdriver locks the spring into place, as you saw, and the, bu the button pretty much just slides in and snaps into place. Um, I found that I'm less likely to break the new button doing it this way than if I follow the directions that come with the knobs. Anyway, um, 
Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button if you like this video. And we'll see you next time. Have a good day.